Tell them I'm Mr. a.k.a. Pops, out of gym at Chicago, with another sit-down, brief one. Before I get started, though, like always, I want to send all praises on and glory out to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Kakodash, to the apostles and elders of GMS out of New York, and the elder bishops out of Connecticut, and the apostles just down in Texas, I want to send up one, it's because they do root well. For the brethren around the world, pushing truth and cut unfiltered, giving you good, bad, and ugly of the prophecies, correctly breaking down the prophecies and the declaration of war on the planet, I send salutations. For the hope we let, I hope this is edifying. For the aqua, the fear, and the truth, as listeners to said and share to keep doing so. And for the scorners call for reprobate, two thirds Israelites, and 17 other nations who are in the midst of Jacob's trouble, it's only going to get worse. So, anyway, right now, like I said, you know, this is a real, real short clip. It's only about two minutes long. It's speaking on Vladimir Putin. And what you all don't understand about this man, uh, this man is heavy, heavy in the prophecies, okay? Because whether you understand it or not, Gog and Magog uh, 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 these, and these type of things, this is speaking of Russia, okay? Two ball and all that is talking about Turkey and all these other kinds of things. So you got a lot of prophecy of the Middle East that's jumping off over there in Europe and whatnot all at the same time right now as, you know, as, as, as America would want to call him, as the boogeyman get his shit in order to, to, to run down on Babylon, the great, the golden city, and fuck it up, okay? So now, let me show you. You see, Moscow Stadium packed with people, okay? Let me get the scripture first. Let me get the scripture first. Let me go get the scripture, show it to you so you can see it. Uh, I guess. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Ezekiel 38. See, this is a powerful scripture now because this is a lot of the geopolitics, especially when it comes to Russia, that you're going to see here in the, that, that you've been seeing and you're going to see and it's only going to escalate. See, this Russian prophecy, this prophecy of Gog and Magog, which is basically Russia, is going to magnify itself until it manifests itself into the nuclear weaponry being coming out of the galls. And what that is, is coming out of the silos and being shot. Okay? And that's just the bottom line. So let's read this. And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, excuse me, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against him and say, Thus says Lord Power, Behold, I am against the old God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws and will bring thee forth and all thy army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with buckle shields, all of them handling swords. Okay? I'm going to stop right there. I will turn thee back. So I'm going to make you go back into the, the superpower that you once was. The fear of America. You know, the, the, the Cuban Missile Crisis of 61. Uh, uh, yeah, 61, 62, right around there. The Cuban Missile Crisis 
the judge y'all was because Russia was willing to give Cuba and Castro nuclear weapons and put them right there in the backyard of uh, America by putting them in Cuba. There's no missile defense system. There's nothing that they could do that could stop them from being able to bomb what they want to bomb if, if Russia was to get those missiles in Cuba like that. There's no reaction time. There's no amount of time that you would you would have. It, shit, shit will go up in like five minutes, if that. There's no tracking. There's no, it, it, like I said, them being that close with that kind of range, they don't even have to become uh, 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 intercontinental. They don't have to go from one end of the earth to the other. They just got to go from one backyard to another. It'd be like, uh, uh, Russia bombing Palestine or whatever the case might be with the missiles that be used the amount of thrust and power that they have they wouldn't have to go out the stratosphere to even do that okay on, 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 on those kinds of levels and whatnot. Those those size missiles those size rockets would have enough jet power to, to get up into the upper stratosphere but not out of space and be able to come back down and hit it from Cuba, easily. And not even that, they don't even need that much. So, to turn them back is to, is to, is to pump them up and to believe that he's the superpower that, that can bring America down. This is what it is, turn back. He's gonna pump them up and make them believe that he can, he can pull them, he can, he can take on America without there being much, uh, much repercussions. I mean, there's going to be repercussions, but he can he can withstand the repercussions. And like I said, Russia a few years back did the whole uh, testing, you know, housing 4 million people, you know, making sure the whole ventilation system, the whole sewage system and everything else could house 4 million people, you know, for an adequate amount of time for them to be able to survive a nuclear fallout. So, you know, it, 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 in Putin's mind, he's got enough people slated that if he wanted to push the button, he would have enough people coming out of the bunkers for him and his and his civilization as Russia being the top dog in the process of being able to come out and make it. That's his mindset. That's what he thinks. So now let me show you. Let me show you the pumping up part the turning back part, okay? You know, when they flex military might and this, that, and other, that's the turning back part, all these things. So let me show you what he's doing now. Mark this day. It is one day after Russian President Vladimir Putin's State of the Nation address. And it's exactly two days before the war is going to enter its second year. Let me show you what's happening in Russia right now. A stadium packed with people, cheering, unfurling the national flag. And Vladimir Putin entering the stage like in any classic James Bond film. Support the. What does that headline say? What did that headline say? Let me bag it up for 10 seconds. A James Bond like welcome for Vladimir Putin. James Bond. Super spy. <laughs> The propaganda is the propaganda, but like I said, he's he's sucking this up. He's sucking this up. So you got Vladimir Putin from forming Russia Soviet Republic to war in UK. Okay, let's let it play. Putin calls on his people to support the war. 
Putin calls on his people to support the war. This is the turning back. This is the turning you back into the superpower that believes that you can take on America and deal with it. And oh, he's absolutely going to be able to do it because it's, it's actually slated in the scriptures for it to be done. So he's going to be able to do this. He's going to be able to pull this off because it's the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. That's what y'all don't understand. That's what people don't want to deal with. Vladimir Putin is one of the Lord's hammers that he's going to use. He's going to use an Edomite to check an Edomite. Okay? Since, since, their, since their blessing was the sword and both of them have developed their blessing to the point where it can take on prolific and prophet and prophetic uh, uh, annihilation numbers. Okay, he's gonna he's gonna turn Edomite on Edomite. So that's that that's a scripture. Uh, let me get the scripture. Okay, so this is Mark three, starting at twenty. Now I'm starting at twenty two. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said he hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devil cast it, he out devils. So this is the the the, uh, the scribes, the Pharisees, these people that's supposed to be the religious people in the day. But Yahweh Shai gives them a parable to get them to understand that they they really don't have an idea as to what's going on because. He's the good that that the world said was going to be coming. But at that time and whatnot, they they so busy wanting to hold a preeminent seat, they couldn't see it. But it's, it, 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 it's apropos to what it is that's, that's happening now with Satan being against Satan. Okay. And, okay. And he called them, he, and he called them unto him and said unto them in parables how can Satan cast out Satan and if a kingdom be divided against itself that kingdom cannot stand so this is Edomite against Edomite so that's why I said the Lord is going to have Edomite square off against Edomite with, with some of the most powerful weapons that they've ever been allowed to create not the most powerful weapons but the most powerful weapons they were able to create and smash on each other, okay? And since the Lord wants this place to be totally annihilated, America, which is Babylon, is one of the, one of the titles is called is Babylon in the in the in the scriptures is going to be totally destroyed in the process of. So you know, this is something that that is preordained and written. And the, the scripture says that the word is not going to come back void. It's going to go out and accomplish everything it says. So if he says that he's going to destroy uh, uh, America and turn it into a desert, then this is absolutely what's going to be done when it's all said and done. Okay. Um, 25. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but half an end. So it says, uh, Esau is the, is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning. So Esau then had his run on the world and now he's coming to his end. Okay? Period. So let's go back over here and let this play. Right now there is a battle on our historical frontiers. For our people, they are being led by the same kind of courageous fighters as those that are standing here now next to us. They are fighting heroically, courageously. So you see, he he's pumping up his warriors now. 
and he's getting his people, he's pumping up his people to stand behind his warriors. Okay? That's what he's doing right now. He's pumping up his people to stand behind his warriors. Okay? Bravely, we are proud of them. And in their honor, we three cheers. They must hear our greetings. Today they are supported by the whole country. The occasion is the Defender of the Fatherland Day. The event dates back to the first years of the existence of the Russian Soviet Republic. Traditionally, this year evokes a sense of patriotism across Russia. And for Moscow, the feeling is needed much more this year than any other. The stage was different, but Putin's script was more or less the same as the day before. He called on his fellow citizens to support the cause in Ukraine. His speech had all flavors of nationalism. Interestingly, the people resounded with applause and hurrahs. So, why wouldn't they? The Lord said that he's going to make this, this happen. So why wouldn't the people resound like that? Why wouldn't the people pump it up like that and whatnot. That's all within the, the framework of what Yahweh Bashim Hashem says is going to happen. Okay. Uh, let me see. Let me get this other one last scripture. Okay. Isaiah 47 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground, there is no throne, O daughters of the Chaldeans, but thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Okay. Take the millstones and grind mill, uncover thy locks, make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. America lies, how they cheat people, how they fuck over nations and all this other kind of stuff has been exposed. So, so it's no longer a chaste virgin. Everybody knows that she's she's scandalous as fuck, and so now she's going to be destroyed. Okay. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. This is your how was shy speaking. I'm coming back to get you, and I'm not going to meet you as a man. As for our Redeemer, Yahweh of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. So see, he's coming to bring vengeance to, to, to Esau, okay? He's coming to bring vengeance to Esau, and he's coming in his glory. He's coming in his might. He's coming in his power. Okay, let's go back here. Pull it up this way. I get to show up this way. I just hit Babylon. What is this? Psalms 137 and 8. O daughter of Babylon, who I who ought to be destroyed. Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. So the way you did the Israelites, the Lord's going to be happy when he cuts Yahweh Shai loose and let him get at you in that same manner. 13 and 9. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the child deeds, actually shall be Excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. So what did the Lord do to Sodom and Gomorrah? He made that a place so they're so desolate now that it was probably, you got to remember now, Sodom and Gomorrah uh, 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 um, with Lot and Abram had went and found some of the richest soil and richest greenest Crazy pastures that was available. Okay, because they had so much livestock, which was a wealth, which is a wealth, 
they had so much livestock that they had to find places for them to be able to eat. And Lot took the the more greener pasture. And the Lord destroyed that there. Now all it is is pitch and dust over there. And that's what he's going to turn America. He said Sodom and Gomorrah will be, is going to be off, better off than America when he gets through with it. So, and, and you can't grow shit over there in, in, in Sodom and Gomorrah now. So this place, this this vast uh, uh, land of farming and, and, and agriculture that used to be a pillar in the world is going to become nothing more than the dust that fucking desert creatures live in. And this is the Lord's game plan. And he's pumping up, he's pumping up Vladimir Putin right now to get him to 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 understand that his four million people that he can he can restart civilization with is it, it, safe. And that when he needs to push the button, do it and don't hesitate. And that's all this is about. Okay? Doing the will of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah in the process. So it is going to happen. So, hey, with that, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to send all praises on and glory out to Yahweh Bashim Al Shah, Bashim Akakwadash, the apostles and elders of GMS out of New York. Again, double honors. The elder bishops out of Connecticut, the apostles down in Texas. Like I said, because they do rule well for the brethren around the world, pushing the truth uncut, unfiltered, give you good, bad, and ugly, declaring war on the planet. Again, salutations, stand strong, push this word, just get up out of here. For the hopeful elect, I hope that's edifying. Aqua, few and true. Hey, if you got an Israelite man, you better hold on to him because that can be your covering. Okay? And for the hope, uh, and for that whole first group, a hearty shot of wine. But for the so-called two-third Israelites and 17 other nations who are in the midst of Jacob's trouble, a ball for ball.